Here's the Oklahoma Kid. Sorry I haven't put any of these videos out in a little bit, but I've been working my butt off at work. Doing stuff and things. Getting out doing a little fishing. And uh, so to have a day off. It's a really rainy, wet, nasty day. Can't really go out and go fishing very well. So I thought we'd tie up some flies. This is what I've been catching them on. I wanted to share it with you guys. It is a, a midge. Surprise, surprise. Cold water, cold weather. You should have a bunch of midges in your pocket. You catch a whole bunch of fish. What size? Reach over and grab the hook. That's right. 22. We're going to tie it up in a 20 so you can see it a little bit easier. That's the hook we're using. Um, I especially like in these really small sizes. You look, it'll say uh, 2x short, 3x wide. That's the one you want, 3x wide. These really, really small hooks, you need a lot of gap between the shank and the, uh, and the hook point so you can get that hook into the fish. Cold water means there's not a lot of insect life. The one insect that is going to be prevalent is midges. So far, we've tied some flies. How do you know what to tie on your line? My biggest suggestion to any new fly fisherman is when you get out to the stream, before you get out to the stream, cut all the flies off your line. If you arrive with an empty line, open mind, look at the water, see what the water is telling you. Are there flies coming off? Trout rising? If not, you need to go with something subsurface. How do you know what to use subsurface? Whether it's a midge, here's your nymph, uh, sulfur nymph. Caddis nymph, what do you use? You start flipping over rocks, go to a shallow section, one particularly with uh, some white water in it, flip the rocks over, look at the bottom of the rocks. You'll see the bugs on there. What you should see right now is the little midges. Little tiny uh, midges, long thin bodies, really, really, really active, squirming around. You can use a little minnow net behind the rock, just dip it in right behind the rock, flip the rock over, sometimes you'll catch some stuff there as well. Uh, but cold weather, pretty much the only bug that's going to be active is the midge. We're going to show you how to tie this up. Um, when you tie these up, you want to tie them up in several different colors. Right now, where I fish, Southeast PA, this light color is working really well. So let's get started. There we go. Got our little size 20 in there. Put my finger up there and you can see how absolutely minuscule that hook is. Again, that's why you want that extra wide gap. Standard gap, if it doesn't uh, catch right in the corner of their mouth, right in the bottom jaw, you typically don't have enough room here for the hook point to get in their mouth. So if it catches back in their mouth a little bit on the top of their mouth, standard hook gap typically isn't going to catch it. That's just my feelings on it, the way I fish it. A thread. We're using a pale yellow. It's called a light Cahill. An 80. Why? Because I don't have 16. <laughs> this small, I would actually um, want to do a 16. And we are going to lead this a little bit. So we're using a little lead strip, just one wrap on it. For the tail, using partridge, just a couple fibers off of it. For the body, turkey quill in calabatus color. Again, you want to tie these up in a few different colors depending on what's active in your stream. It might be a dark brown, it might be a green. Typically, it's going to be black or something along that line, gray. 
um, dark brown, dark green. Right now, this is what they want, Calabatus, which is kind of a uh, light brown, almost a little bit of a green in it. And then for the legs, we're going to use some Hairs Ear Ice Dub. For the, for the thorax, the, the body part of the thorax, we're going to use rabbit fur. Um, and this is a hair's mask. Really old hair's mask that my aunt actually got me. Uh, we're going to show you how to pick some fur off of this. And then the thorax cover is pheasant tail. So let's get started. And I have to zoom in so I have to really kind of pay attention to it's going to be difficult for me to tie because uh, I have to keep looking back at the screen to see what's in, in the shot, what's not in the shot. So I just want to cut a point in my lead strip. You want to cut these really, really, really narrow. Put it right back here at the bend. I'm just going to put my finger where I want it to start and wrap it. And again, I'm reverse wrapping this because when I put my thread on, I want my thread to tighten this up. So just a little bit behind the, the hook eye, put an extra wrap just for a little bit more weight, also creating the body shape that I want. Cut that off, smooth it. Now we're ready for our thread. You can already see a little bit of a body taper there. Put our thread on. I generally start right in the middle. Very loose wraps. Go to the front. Come, whoops, out of the hook point. Come back. And I kind of go around the bend a little bit. When I come back up through, now is when I tighten everything up. Get it good and tight. You don't have to completely cover it. You just want to make sure it's good and secure. No lumps, no bumps. End up with your thread all the way at the back. I'm going to pull some fibers off of this. I'm going to make them stand 90 degrees out from the stem with the tips line up. measure it according to your hook size so we want about body length do a pinch wrap so I put the thread through my fingers around the material around the hook and then I just pull the thread through my fingers through the material Fibers kind of lift them up a little bit. One wrap on top. Don't be scared to tie these little tiny flies. The only thing tricky about these is your thread wraps. If you can't tie material in with just a couple of thread wraps, the thread wraps will actually build up enough bulk to where the fly won't look right. That's the only trick about it. Also, these, you're going to lose a lot of these flies, so don't get really, really uptight if they don't look perfect. Fish them anyway. Let the fish tell you whether or not they're good or bad. So we went forward, we cut off our excess, we're coming back, we're not all the way back yet. And we're going to tie in our body, which is our turkey bio. So there's two sides, you have your long side, you have your short side, you can use either one. I'm using the longer side. Want just one. Okay, so we cut our eye on. And if you look at them, try to hold it up endwise, you'll see it, it's cupped. So it has like a little dish on the top. That's what you want. You don't want it that way. I'm going to 
if you can see that. I want it that way. So concave. Oh, I'm going to tighten it by the tip. The tips are really fragile. So. You're going to tie a bit of the tip in. Move it all the way back to right on top of your tail section. Right there. I'm going to move my thread up to where I want the thorax to begin. Your fly should always be segmented about two thirds body, one third uh, thorax. I have a rotary vise, which I'm going to use that function right now, so I'm going to just quick whip this off, put a little knot in there, pull my thread out of the way. You could wrap this by hand just as easily. Make sure that your biot is cupped the right way. If, you've, if you have it upside down, it'll create a very smooth body. If you have it this way, it should make a very segmented body which will look really, really, really nice. And I go well beyond where I actually want to stop it. Actually, let's go one more turn. So you can see the kind of body that it creates there. Really nice body. I'm going to put my finger on this side to hold the material. Take my thread out of the holder. Now here's my tag end. I'm going to go behind the tag end and over it. And as soon as I do, I'm going to grab the tag end and pull it back along the body. And then wrap over that. So I'm wrapping over the folded part right there. And wrap it back to where you want the thorax to begin, which is going to be right about there. Cut off your excess. Now we're going to tie in our pheasant. I've already tied a few of these. I already have them in my hackle plier. I'm just going to set that right on top and tie it in. You want these to be all lined up right next to each other and perfectly on top. put our legs on. Our legs are going to be iced up in a brown, but it has some real sparkly stuff in it. This is optional. And you're dealing with size 20, so you're not going to need that much. Just a tiny little bit. So you have some material and you're just going to roll it in your fingers. Create a noodle. Fold it back over itself, roll it again. And that's kind of what you should end up with. It's just a little tube, a little noodle. We're going to lay it sideways, right on top. And I'm going to take a thread wrap over it, loose. thread wrap over it this way, which is a figure eight, and I'm going to pull straight down. That way it's locked in directly on top. Bring my thread behind it. And we're going to grab our hair mask, and you want to pick mainly from the ears. So you just grab some fur, you don't cut it, you just grab some fur, pull it, and you get a little tiny bit out every time. Just keep doing that over and over so you get enough out. Put that on your thread, dub it just like normal.
two behind the legs, pull the legs back, two in front of the legs. And we gotta start to form our head, put our legs back on the correct sides, and we're gonna pull our pheasant. Again, you want them side by each right over the middle. That leg out of the way. And then as soon as I pull it down, I pull up on the pheasant just a little bit. Bring our hackle pliers back in. Grab our pheasant because we can tie another fly with that. Cut that free so it's all stacked in there ready for the next one. And you can get about, I don't know, six or seven flies like that. Ready to whip finish. Now your legs kind of pull out a little bit. Anything that's too long. I got a bunch of long stuff on this side, we're just going to cut off a little bit. Put the long stuff back here. But you got all kinds of legs, a little bit of sparkle in there. Lots of movement. Get it to focus a little bit better. There we go. Nice dark thorax on top. Wing case. Display that tail out a little bit better. And again, tie these up in light, in dark. A little bit of everything. Try them out. That should get you some fish. Hope you guys liked it. Hope it helped you out a little bit. And I'll see you on the water.